This session is about taking your idea from conception through to fruition. The scenario that I wanted to talk to you about today was um, having that uh, brilliant idea, that niche, exciting new idea, and where you need to go with that idea, who you need to talk to, and how you can possibly get that idea off the ground. Great ideas often get lost or left on the shelf because there's a lot of fear that happens in that space about who do I need to talk to, who can I share my idea with, will it be a silly idea, will I lose face, or is this idea so brilliant that someone may want to run with that idea. Community Compass supports innovative ideas and supports entrepreneurs and social enterprises to take those next steps. We're here to guide you because we understand some of those fears that you're experiencing, but we also understand where you need to take those next questions to. Let's look at some of the questions that innovators face. So have you thought about your entity structure and what form that that might take? So as a non-profit entity, some of the structures available to you are being an incorporated association or a cooperative or a company limited by guarantee. Now each of these entity types have a different reporting structure and they're some of the things that I want to talk to you about today and guide you through in understanding what some of that compliance and reporting requirements are as a non-profit entity. What if you want to be a for-profit structure? So some of the entity structures that are available to you as a for-profit entity are being a sole trader, a partnership, or again a company. Now that list isn't endless, but what my advice would be is that you seek your accountant's advice to follow that up in further detail as to what's going to be the most suitable structure for you if you're wanting to be a for-profit. Choosing the structure of a non-profit entity can uh, align you with your values around community development. So that could be one of the core reasons why you're wanting to set up as a non-profit entity. You may be entitled to some tax concessions on the income that you're going to generate into that entity structure. And also you could be able to secure yourself some grant funding, philanthropic funding and uh, foundation funds. So there's a myriad of income streams that are available to you as a non-profit entity that can support taking that brilliant idea through to fruition and getting you out there into action. As a non-profit entity, there are compliance matters that you need to be aware of. And those compliance matters are about who do we report to, how often do we need to report to them, and, and in what form do we need to report. So as an incorporated association or a cooperative, you need to report to the Office of Fair Trading. So the Office of Fair Trading is state legislation and it has guidance and, and guidelines and they have a brilliant website that has some amazing resources available to you if you're going to choose that entity structure. The alternative is a company limited by guarantee which is a federal legislation and you become um, registered under ASIC which is the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. To set up as an incorporated association, it really is as simple as filling in some forms that are downloadable from the website, and there's a small fee applicable in your application. However, it's not just about filling in the forms. There is the requirements of having a board that are going to support you as an individual getting that idea out there. So the, that's one of the compliance areas for the incorporated, as being an incorporated association. And uh, the requirements are you can actually start with three board members, but it is recommended that you grow those board mem that board membership to five, seven or nine um, members that will be meeting regularly to oversee the governance of your idea. Governance is about the leadership and the strategic vision of the organisation. As an incorporated association, there are guidelines that you need to abide by and it's known as your model constitution. Now this is provided to you by the Office of Fair Trading when you apply for your um, application to become an incorporated association. Within these guidelines is a framework that can support your first steps in good governance and that's about the timing of your meetings, the roles that your board members need to take, who will be in your membership, grievance procedures and conflict resolution. It's a guide that can support you to your next steps. 
Look out for other YouTube um, clips of this nature that will support you in understanding the gamut of compliance um, from the Australian Tax Office when you're in this start-up phase. Aside from the Office of Fair Trading, there are other bodies that you need to be reporting to or at least thinking about registering with, and that would be the Australian Tax Office. These would be for matters such as whether you're going to have um, business activities happening, so you'll need to register for an ABN number, which is your Australian business number. And then you may need to apply for PAYG, and if that's if you're going to be thinking about taking on staff. So PAYG is pay as you go, and that's about the withholding of some tax from your staff. To help set the scene for the decision about your entity structure, what I'd like to get you to do now is to think about the big picture of your idea. So where is it that you're wanting to take this idea? Where are you wanting to be located? Where are you going to be working from? Who are your target audience? And how are you going to reach them? Some of those questions are critical in helping you understand the size, the location and also then the income opportunities that you're going to be having. What's actually driving your idea? What's the big picture plan? Why are you actually doing what you want to do? For example, Meals on Wheels isn't just about putting a meal on the table, but it's about a community approach, about maintaining and sustaining somebody to be able to stay independent for longer and able to stay in their homes by keeping them well connected to other community members and also providing a nutritional meal for them to be sustained. It's really critical for you to get really clear with this uh, concept about what dr what's driving your idea because when you're really clear with that you're going to be able to, this will be your selling point to get other people engaged in your idea. Some of the questions that you might want to ask yourself to get really clear about this is who is your target audience? Why are you wanting to do the things that you're doing? What is your point of difference? So why would someone within the community want to engage with your project as opposed to somebody else's? And getting really clear about what your offering is. So where will you operate from? Where are you going to start your project from? What skill sets do you need? What are you bringing to the table as the ideas person? And what skill sets do you have? And then who do you need to surround yourself with to bring those other skills to help get your innovative idea into fruition? How many staff will you need? What skills will they need when you're starting to engage other people into the space? As the entrepreneur, one of the critical questions that you will need to ask yourself is what are your expenses currently and how are you going to sustain yourself through this startup phase of your project? We hope that this snapshot of ideas will help you along your journey of taking your innovative idea to fruition. We wish you the best with your innovation and just remember that everybody has the capacity to be remarkable.